Welcome back to the workshop. We are making a Shamsha scimitar. This is part two of what's probably going to be a hell of a lot of episodes. So buckle up for the ride. Thank you for joining me. Thank you to Fusion 360 for sponsoring this episode. We forged out a ton of Damascus and there is a mosaic pattern underneath here, which we're going to start exposing by using a hard angle grinding disc to grind through the scale. And then we're going to flatten off the whole thing with a fresh 36 grit belt on the 2x48 steel grinder. So let's go make some dust. I present to you the McSteel Sandwich. We're going to talk a little bit about how we actually end up at the finished blade out of this crusty old lump of metal we currently have. Now what we just did is we took the 9 inch grinder and we cut into this layer here. That is the scale layer. It's all sorts of bumpy. There's tons of scale that makes these big divots, but it's also extremely hard and wastes good abrasive belts. So we use the cheap 9 inch grinding discs to get through that and have a very rough layer underneath. Then, coming ever closer to our final dimension, we then rough in a pretty flat surface with a 36 grit belt. That's our red right here. We'll use that flat surface to make a reference scribe line that is the center all the way down the blade before we then start cutting in the bevels again with a 36 grit belt, leaving plenty of thickness for final finishing. So there's still a bunch more steps to go, but for now I'm going to upgrade my PPE a little bit. Oh, over to a brand new Alex Steel Co. Supply 3M Versaflow. <sighs> oh, it feels so good to be back. So I've come out here to use the welding table to see how flat we are. In this orientation, the tip is held up a little bit. Flipped over, there's now a bow here. So it's curving down this way. We'll see if we can do some straightening, maybe in the vise. Wow, I have just made it exponentially worse. That's just awful. It's now got a twist as well. It's looking a little better. So after some flattening of the blade, you also saw I squared up the transition between the tang and the blade using a carbide file guide. I now know those shoulders are perfectly square to the spine, and I can now take measurements off of this tang, this blade, and get myself out of the grinding room by doing some design work for our guard. We've talked about the ornamentation and how that design is going to take shape over time, but now I want to work out what are the cutting and machining steps I need to make to get our blade and guard to fit together well. So we're going to take the Fusion 360 to do some of this, and they are thankfully sponsoring this episode. Fusion 360 from Autodesk is software that I absolutely love having in my maker's arsenal. It unifies design, engineering, electronics, and manufacturing into a single platform, and is the only truly integrated CAD CAM CAE and PCB tool in the market. I've been using it for several years now on various projects in the workshop, but I've only ever just scratched the surface. So I'm always really inspired when I see other makers and the incredible design work they can do, like Tyler Bell and of course Bob, uh, I like to make stuff, whose online course taught me a huge amount about the software. As you can see, I used it to sketch out the profile of the guard, extrude it, and then cut it out to final shape. Whether you like to think in a subtractive or additive manner, Fusion 360 is going to work for you. But one of my all-time favorite 
things about the software and the parametric modeling capabilities. I learned this stuff from Bob. It's amazing. You can set parameters, create a part, and then retroactively change dimensions without needing to go back to the original drawing. Whether you're CNC machining, 3D printing, or just designing parts for a manual machine, Fusion 360 is going to help you out so much. So please go get a free 30-day free trial. Down in the link in the description. So I had a look on the steel rack, and we're going to have to forge out the block for the guard from some round bar. So while the forge gets hot again, we'll keep doing some flattening on that blade. Holy moly! Time of flyers in the grinding room. That was 40 minutes. The forge is hot! Just wasting fuel now. And now I've got to work out the volume of the guard and plan how we make it so we know how much material we've got to take. Let's open up the properties. 32,500 millimeters cubed. Our options for making it are either we forge or cast it perfectly to dimension. That's not going to happen. Or we make up a big, huge block of steel and cut out all the excess. Or we try and get somewhere in the middle. We forge it close to shape and then grind and cut away the rest. Shut up, I'm trying to edit over here. Hey, you're <laughs> editing this video. <laughs> this option would require a ton more material. I don't even understand how much material that is. So this is the rough shape we're gonna forge it to, and that requires this. I started fullering it. I was hoping to keep these points as wide as possible, but the fullering pulled it down. It was 75 millimeters, and just that little bit of fullering has reduced it to 65 millimeters. So what I need to do in order to account for that, if I want to forge this shape, is take more material, because I was just about running out. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take enough material to forge a block that's 85 millimeters wide, then we'll fuller it, It'll hopefully end up 75 millimeters. This is how we're looking at the guard, so we really need every bit of width we can to forge these points. So we've got our block forged out. I'm a little concerned about my thickness here because we're ever so close to our final dimension, which would be all fine and dandy if it weren't for the fact that I very stupidly used punches to mark the center so that I could forge these shoulders out, but used the punches very deeply, which means we now have very deep divots in there that we've got to somehow grind or mill through, and it might end up meaning that our finished guard is thinner than we drew up in Fusion. We shall see how deep they go, so one of my first steps is gonna be facing off the side of our guard, then cutting it to length, roughing in some of the profile before we take to the mill to cut our slots for the blade and for the handle. A rough old chunk of forged steel is taking shape, though it might not look it. One of the things that I made sure to do is mill some reference flats on either end so that we can make sure we always have it held horizontally, perpendicular to the cutting tool. And where we stand, we're halfway done. If I select shaded with hidden edges, you'll see what it's gonna look like. And we are from the one, two, three block and up. We have yet to hollow out the handle side. We're in for one hell of a journey with this Shampshire. I'm sure I've got plenty of mistakes
mistakes to make. I'm so grateful to Autodesk for having sponsored this video. Please, please, please go get your free trial of Fusion 360 down at the link below. Thank you all so much. See you very soon on part three.